In this video, I want to show you how to use a file input with Visual Logic. It can be done. It's pretty easy. There are some simple mistakes that you can make that can leave you very frustrated. I've spent a couple of days playing with this just to find that I made a very serious error that I didn't even think about. So I'm going to start by showing everybody what mistake I made so that hopefully you don't repeat the experience. When you're working with Visual Logic and creating an input file, it has to be a simple text file. And you have to put each entry on a new line. My error when I saved it was I did a file, save as, and I saved it as input dot txt. Well, that might not be bad, you're thinking to yourself, except though I didn't see it, it was actually saving it as input txt dot txt because the extension was already on here. That was my mistake. So I wanted to make sure that I do it as an input in a text document type. I don't want to save it as input dot txt. That destroys it. It doesn't work. You'll never get it to work as long as it's named that. So don't make my mistake. So I'm going to save it. And I have very simple input here. I just have six numbers, which I'm going to call ID. And I've created a very simple program. So I've made an array called ID. And I'm using traditional programming numbering, where I have a variable I numbered 0 through 5. And I have an input with ID with my, trans my index of I, and my file name is input.txt. Notice I'm also using I again here. It's OK. Once you leave this loop, this I ceases to exist. It's out of scope. It doesn't matter anymore. We can use that name again. It won't hurt anything. So now I have my output, and this one I'm doing to the console. I did put a blank line after here by clicking Enter and making sure the new line, the end of my text symbol appears down here. And so now it should take all of my input here, and it should display it in the console. Let's give it a try. There you go. Let's say we want to do this as a parallel array. How would we do that? Well, here you actually have to put in all the data one field at a time. So we would have, let's say we're going to just put in student last names. Now they have to be in quotes because they are text fields. So we'll just make up some last names. Um, and There we go. So let's see. We have six student IDs and six student names. Perfect. So we're going to have to save this again. I'm just going to hit Save since I've got it named properly. Move that out of my way. And now I'm going to have to do this as a separate one because we've got it. We've got to do all of these, and then it will take the next line. So we're going to add a. We've got to add another array. I like to have all of my arrays right up at the top. This is the way I program to. All the variables should go first. And so this will be last name, and the upper bound will be six, because we can have six spaces in it. And then we're going to have another for loop. And we're going to call it i. I'm just proving that you can use it over and over. You don't have to, but you can. Zero to five by one. And then we're going to input, and our variable is last name, i, and we have to go into more, and we have to choose file, and file name should be input, that txt, OK. And here, we don't need to do it as a separate loop, because once they're in their arrays, we can make them, put them next to each other. So we can do id plus quote space 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 quote and I'm going to just show you you can use ampersand instead plus or ampersand they do the same thing and then we're going to have last name I and that looks good let's test it 
I just love testing program and code live. You can see how many mistakes I make, but that worked. So you can see input and output are fine, but what if we want to output it to a file? Well, number one rule, if you're going to output it, you don't put it you don't output it to the same file that you input it from. That's not allowed. So the file name needs to be, we'll just call it output.txt. And I will hit OK. And I will choose file or I will play it. And nothing appears to happen. So I'm going to go out to where my documents are. Oh, and the other thing you have to remember is your Visual Logic executable file must be in the same file folder as your input file. It's also where your output file should show up. So if I did this right, there's output, and there it is. So input, output, both files will be in the same file folder your Visual Logic executable file is in. And when you're saving it, make sure not to put the extra .txt on it. As long as you do that, pretty simple. It's all good. It works. It's lots of fun. So that's your input at, um, output example for Visual Logic.